somebody was already here taking the CPU. The rest is not really interesting. So I'll take I'll take this and this one two yeah three four. Unfortunately, PCB is missing. Hard drives were delivered with a bad sector table and here you have somebody writing the bad sectors per hand on the drive. And if you wanted to use this hard drive, you had to configure these bad sectors in your system that the system will not use these sectors writing and reading from that disk. Yeah, all these hard drives do not have the PCB anymore. These drives never work, I'm not even bothering taking this. And we have an S3 card and... One second. Two Looks like a Yamaha chip. Yamaha. Unfortunately no. And we now have 3D printers arriving as well here at the scrap yard. The Bosch FDL 60. Are you looking for a boss electric drill? <laughs> this weighs 20 grams. That's more. And more.
So we have a graphics card and a sound card. Might be interesting. Let's see what's in it. And no, it's not interesting at all. There are a few more systems that are maybe interesting. But yeah, they are below all these other cases here. Let's see. I have to ask if I can shuffle them around. Very nice case. Unfortunately, I don't have space. But let's see what's in there. So we have a DIN 5 connector, so most probably socket 7 or earlier. Let's see. And we do have, this is pretty much a socket 7. Let's see what CPU is in there. Pentium 133. And we have, I think this is a Yamaha sound card. Let's get these out. And it's a Yamaha sound card. We have a PCI video card. And it's an S3 Trio 64. We have a Coast module. Level 2 cache. Probably 256. There are another 256 here. Here we are. And it's the Intel VX chipset. That's why we have SD memory sockets here. This is the chipset that supported them. And the next one is absolutely identical. Here's the other one. Most probably exactly the same stuff in there. Uh, yeah, it's pretty much the same. Just the CPU now is a 100 megahertz Intel Pentium. And we have no graphics card or sound card in there anymore. Maybe somebody was already here and took it. Here's the last one on this side. Let's see what's in it. Oh. Uh, MSI branded heatsink and a lot of spiders. Oh, it's a K7. Huh. It has an ISA slot, PCI and AGP. So let's figure out which K7 this is. Hopefully there's no big spider somewhere. Okay, here it is. And the Athlon. Which one is it? 750. Nice CPU. Maybe also nice motherboard. This is the GA7VX Indivision 1.0. Let's hope that the board survived the rusting attacks of the case. And here's the board. It looks in really good condition, at least compared to how the case looks like. I still have to look at the ISA connector. This was very close to the rusted case. The I.O. ports are a little bit bad, but we can replace those. Capacitors look good. I'm not sure if this is a good chipset, to be honest, but you can let me know in the comments but it is very hard to find slot a motherboards and yeah that's why i want to definitely take this one specifically because it was also in a case and will not have any major scratches or other damage as far as i can tell so yeah very rare to find slot a at the scrapyard So yeah, it looks like it's an AMD day today.
that was extremely lucky to find four AMD K6 3 CPUs. And these ones are most probably K6 3 Plus, so the mobile version of it with low power. Now you have seen where I found these CPUs and of course the pins are bent. I'm not going to waste your time bending all these pins straight, so then let's remove the thermal paste and have a look what is actually etched into the aluminum top of these CPUs. And then later we can test them and maybe even overclock them. I think these mobile processors are really good overclockers. We should be able to get 500 megahertz out of them, maybe even 550 or even 600. And this thermal paste is really dried in. Oh no, I think this chip is broken. I didn't see that. I think this chip is unfortunately dead. We'll look at this under the microscope, but there is a crack in the ceramic. Unfortunately, I think there is nothing we can do for this friend. So yeah, four CPUs. Unfortunately, one of them is dead. This one. We'll look at this under the microscope. Okay, then let's have a look at our AMD K63 Plus CPUs. So, unfortunately, I saw a crack somewhere. It is not this CPU. It looks good. Here in the top corner, you see 400 megahertz running at 1.6 volts core voltage. That's very low. So these ones were meant for mobile devices. So yeah, this is very nice. Okay, so one CPU is here. Let's check this one. Mm. Okay, and here you can see there is a crack in the ceramic and it comes out on this side. So unfortunately, this chip may be okay, but the traces going to the pins on the other side, yeah, here you can see the crack. So yeah, the traces, no way the CPU works. I'm not even bothering straightening the pins. I know there will be some of the, no, no, test it, believe me you would waste your time. Cracked ceramic, this CPU is dead. There is absolutely nothing you can do. So yeah, this one goes all the way through the ceramic. So let's have a look at this one. This one looks good. Okay, this one looks actually very good. Okay, we have one more, and it is exactly the same, K63 plus 400, 1.6 volt core, and is the ceramic cracked? <gasps> oh no, it is. Ah. Okay, wow. Ah, no. This chip is unfortunately dead too. Absolutely nothing we can do here. But now, obviously, the question that we need to answer is, do at least the two chips that don't have a cracked ceramic work? But the first thing I have to do is I have to straighten these pins. Now, I know many of you always put in the comments, use one of these mechanical pencils. And yes, you can do this. However, I prefer a very soft wood, like a toothpick or something a little bit thicker, like the ones I'm using here. And it all depends how comfortable you are. So for me, this is my preferred method because I'm not going to scratch those pins in any form or way. The wood does not scratch those, but that's just me. You can do whatever you want. Okay, the first CPU is in the motherboard. Let's see if it posts. Oh, yes, 400 megahertz, hopefully. Here we go, K63 plus 400. Nice, one CPU of the two works. And the core voltage is set to 1.6 volts. But we want to see if we can push the CPU. And for this, we just have to modify the frequency ratio. Right now we're running at 4X and we need to go up to 5.5x so yeah we have to change these dip switches i think it does i saw the leds on the keyboard and here we are at least the cpu seems to work at 550 that's good so far but does it go into windows 
And no, we are stuck. Ah, what a shame. That CPU is not able to run at 550 megahertz. Okay, 500 megahertz. Same voltage, 1.6 volts. Okay, and it looks like the chip works at that frequency. We are about to win. The match is almost over and I played maybe five minutes. Let's see. Oh, four minutes. And uh, yeah, the chip works at 500 megahertz. So yeah, this is the result for my first chip. Let's check what the other one can do. Okay, chip number two is in the system. Let's see at 550 megahertz if this chip goes into Windows and if it works. I see no life whatsoever on this chip. It doesn't post. Let's see if we get postcodes. Oh yeah, we do. But we immediately get stuck. So it could be that the frequency is just too high. Okay, let's go one step down to 500 megahertz. Yeah, we got a little bit further in the postcodes. Oh, yes, I think we're posting... Yes, okay, so this one doesn't even want to start at 550 megahertz. At 500, it looks like it works, but let's see if we get into Windows. Okay, that looks good, but I have a feeling that the quality of the silicon of this chip is lower than the first one we tested. Okay, we are in Windows. It's exactly the same what we've seen with the other CPU. We are at 500 megahertz and 256 kilobytes of level 2 cache. But unfortunately, it looks like both chips are not overclocking past 500 megahertz. And with this one, I'm even a little bit skeptical if it's stable at 500 megahertz. Only one way to find out. Okay, so after playing around five minutes, the game is still running, no crashes whatsoever. So I would assume that this chip is stable. Of course, you can't say this for sure. If you want to make sure that this chip is really stable, then you have to run stress tests for at least a few hours. But for my purposes, it looks like both chips work well at 500 megahertz and the stock 1.6 volts. So yeah, this is it. I don't think I want to do anything else in this video. I just want to wait. Maybe you have a better idea what I can do with these other two chips. The one with the cracked ceramic. Also, let me know in the comments if you think it is worth trying them or 100% definitely these chips are dead. I'm in the camp. They're dead. They do not work at all. Of course, if you insist, we will try them before we take off the aluminum lid. I'm curious to read what you have to say in the comments. And this is all I have for you today. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks for watching. Also, a big thank you to all my Patreons. And I wish all of you a Merry Christmas. And that's it for today. I hope I will see you in the next video. Take care and bye-bye.